Hi everyone, this is Dr. Ryan Shelton with Zenith Labs. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today's topic, I wanna to talk about two critical issues during the summer months, heat and hydration. Now, North America is experiencing shattering heat records this summer. I've been practicing functional medicine for 18 years and I've never seen anything quite like this. Over two decades ago, when I went to medical school in the Pacific Northwest, Seattle, I chose that location for two important reasons. First of all, it was an outstanding medical school. Secondly, because of the weather, because of the temperate weather, highs in the summer of maybe mid 70s, yesterday in Portland and Seattle, record breaking temperatures above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. People are not prepared for that kind of heat in that part of the country and the entire Western United States is suffering from heat. I wanna make sure that we prevent heat related illnesses and stay well hydrated. And it breaks down to three simple basics. Drink water, get plenty of rest and seek shade. So the basics, stay hydrated throughout the day by drinking water steadily and don't wait until you're thirsty. Avoid diuretics, avoid caffeine and alcohol, which cause us to lose water more rapidly. Take frequent breaks in the shade or indoors in the air conditioned space. Wear loose fitting clothing, lightly colored and lightweight clothes, and never leave children or pets alone in a car. Minimize the use of heat generating appliances like stoves or ovens inside. They only exacerbate and contribute to indoor heat. Try not to exercise outdoors. If you must exercise outdoors, only exercise in the early morning hours or the evening hours, say before 8 a.m. or after 6 p.m. Take cool showers or baths to cool yourself throughout the day. Check the local news and other outlets for important safety information. And check on friends, loved ones, and neighbors, and hopefully get them to check on you so that we keep everyone safe in this heat. Now there are risk factors to heat related illnesses. High humidity. When the humidity is high, sweat will not evaporate as quickly. This keeps your body from releasing the heat as fast as it may need to. And there are personal factors, age, obesity, having acute illness like fever, dehydration, heart disease, mental illness, poor circulation, sunburn, prescription drugs and alcohol use can all play a role in whether or not a person can cool off enough in very hot circumstances. Those who are at the highest risk include people over the age of 65 and older and children younger than two and people with chronic existing disease or mental illness. So the medical definition of heat related illnesses, heat related illness is a physiological insult that occurs when the body is unable to dissipate heat adequately, which leads to dysfunctional thermoregulation. It includes a continuum of syndromes ranging from heat edema or swelling, heat rash, and exercise associated muscle cramps to collapsing, heat exhaustion, and life-threatening heat stroke. Now, to be clear, people diagnosed with the life-threatening heat stroke or severe heat-related illnesses should completely refrain from physical activity outdoors for at least seven days after released from medical care, being acclimated to heat adequate hydration and avoidance of activities during extreme heat are the most effective measures to reduce the incidence of heat related illnesses. Now let's talk about level one, heat edema, heat cramps, heat rash. Heat rash is an irritation to the skin caused by sweat buildup. While common, heat rash is usually treatable by getting individuals into a cool environment and with good ventilation. Sweating causes a loss of body salts and fluids, which can lead to heat cramps. And individuals suffering from muscle spasms or pain due to heat should move to a cool area, rest and hydrate. And if it's too hot indoors, 
the use of a fan only blows hot air on you. So taking cool showers or baths can be vital to prevention of heat-related illnesses. Now let's talk about heat exhaustion. If the body loses too much water in salt, heat exhaustion may result. Signs of heat exhaustion include cool, moist skin, nausea, headache, dizziness, weakness, and a rapid pulse. Workers who work outside should immediately lie down in a cool area, drink lots of water, and apply cold compresses or ice if available. If signs of heat exhaustion do not abate or worsen, the individual should go to the hospital to seek emergency care. Now let's talk about heat stroke. This is life-threatening. It's a medical emergency. If an individual suddenly stops sweating and feels hot to the touch, becomes confused, faints, or has seizures, call 911 immediately. Place the individual in a cool, shady place, loosen and moisten clothing with cool water, apply ice or cold compresses to the individual, and have them drink plenty of fluids. Most heat-related illnesses can be avoided or minimized. Key strategies include acclimatization, so getting acclimated to the heat. And people in the Pacific Northwest are not acclimated, so they're suffering right now. Adequate hydration, which we'll talk about in a moment. Wearing loose-fitting clothing, light-colored clothing, and avoidance of activities during extreme temperatures. When avoidance is not possible, frequent water breaks, scheduled rest and recovery cycles, and close monitoring. And something that you may not be familiar with is called the wet globe temperature meter or wet globe temperature chart. They're free online. Google wet globe temperature meters or charts and you'll find these devices that take into account temperature, humidity, direct radiant sunlight to measure environmental heat, the heat that you're exposed to to help you gauge how long you should stay outdoors and how well you should stay hydrated. Now let's talk about hydration. How much water should you be drinking? There are a couple of simple rules and basic strategies. Take your weight, multiply by two thirds or 66.6 .6 or 67% to determine how much water to drink daily in ounces. So for example, if you weigh 175 pounds, you would multiply that by two-thirds, 66.6%, and learn that you should be drinking about 117 ounces of water every day. Now, if you don't like math, it boils down to this. For males, about 15 and a half cups, 3.7 liters per day. For females, about 11 and a half cups, or 2.7 liters of fluids every day for females. And we also have to consider or calculate in your activity level or the heat according to that wet globe chart that I discussed. So you'll want to adjust hydration amounts based on how often you are outside exercising or working outside or you're outside and sweating. So you should add 12 ounces of water to your daily total intake for every 30 minutes that you are outside working or exercising or you're outside sweating, 12 ounces for every half hour. So if you work out for 45 minutes or if you're a worker in outside heat conditions, you would want to add about 18 ounces of water to your daily intake. Heat illness is significant and this summer it's a scorcher. Stay safe, stay well hydrated, Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been my pleasure. Make sure to, to tune in each and every week so that we can learn more about how to keep you safe and healthy, prevent illness every chance that we get. I'm excited that you're watching me. I'm excited that you're excited about your health. Check us out on YouTube. Check us out on Facebook. It's been my pleasure. Be safe. Be well. Remember, visit zenithlabs.com at the link below, click on the link to subscribe and leave a comment.